Hello everyone. My name is Hector Mendoza. I'm going to be posting eight videos on YouTube uh, that uh, is to how to become a good independent adjuster. So video one of eight will show you how to prepare to become an independent insurance claim adjuster. Video two of eight will show you how to prepare for a pre-inspection as an independent insurance claim adjuster. Video number three of eight will show you some basic guidelines when inspecting property as an independent insurance claim adjuster. Video four of eight will show you some basic guidelines when labeling photos in Xactimate after doing an inspection. Video five of eight will show you some basic guidelines when sketching rooms in Xactimate. Video six of eight will show you some basic guidelines when sketching roofs in Xactimate. Video number seven of eight will show you some basic guidelines when writing an estimate in Xactimate. And video eight of eight will show you some basic guidelines when writing claim notes slash narratives. These are just basic guidelines. And in this um, videos, I'll show you hopefully some detailed guidelines and how to actually do the stuff in uh, on the computer. I'll show you what you need, like equipment, what to expect from uh, a lot of these carriers. So let me show you some of the stuff briefly. First of all, in order to become a claims adjuster, you must have a high school diploma or a GED equivalent. Some employers do require an associate's degree or bachelor's degree, but it's not a requirement. But first of all, you need to determine your insurance adjusting career interests. You know, in, if you want to be a property adjuster, an auto adjuster, commercial adjuster, flood adjuster. So figure out what's going to be your niche, what's going to be the easiest thing for you to do at the beginning. You can always do everything but uh, focus on one particular uh, career in the adjusting field. <clears throat> the first thing you have to do is you have to complete an insurance course and an examination. You have to become licensed as an insurance adjuster. Then once you do that, you have to maintain your license. Every Some companies require you to uh, redo your license once a year. Some of them require three years, some of them four years. But during those times, you have to have um, continued education. So another thing that's really important before you start doing this is think about what you're going to need. For instance, you're going to need a vehicle. You're going to need some kind of navigating device. You know, you have, we have iPhones, uh, apps, map apps, just Remember, you're going to need some kind of GPS system. You're going to need a laptop. With that laptop, you're going to need Xactimate or maybe even Symbility or both. You're going to need a portable printer. Some carriers or some of the people you're going to work with require that you have a portable printer because you got to print checks on site. You're going to need a good letter, possibly a 28 inch 
or maybe a 22 telescopic aluminum multi-purpose letter, a wheel measuring device, or a digital uh, measuring device. You're going to need a camera, regardless if it's an iPhone, an Android, or just a regular camera. Uh, you, you'll need like, a, you know, your like a 32-inch uh, Fat Max uh, measuring tape, possibly a 100-inch measuring tape, or even a 300-inch measuring tape. It's nice to have a tool belt. There's this company called Katmandu, and I'm going to show all of this stuff uh, that sells this belt, and it's specifically for adjusters. You're going to need car, excuse me, Cougar Paul boots. That's for climbing steep roofs, like 7 pitch, 8 pitch, 14, or whatever uh, steep they're going to be that you're. Uh, are comfortable with those particular shoes. You're going to have to know how to apply for a job. Have everything ready. Have everything ready. Like, for instance, your resume. Um, have your history background. Like, for instance, you know, where were you where did you live seven years ago, five years ago, five, uh, four years ago? Because they're going to ask you those kind of questions. Then I'll start going into how to prepare for a pre-inspection as an independent insurance claim adjuster. For instance, organizing your computer, backing up your computer periodically, receiving, accepting claims, mapping your assignments, reviewing your FNOL, first notice of loss, reviewing your prior claims then you're going to be contacting the insured after you do that you have to start thinking about how you're going to prepare your compliance templates those are notes that are put into several different kinds of uh, places like an exactimates a lot of the uh, people you're going to be working with have their own portals then i'll go over some basic guidelines on how to do how to do an inspection for your elevations your roof slopes and other structures and uh and number four you know like you know then I'll show you how to label the photos, sketch the rooms, uh, sketch the roof, write an estimate, and then write your compliance uh, narratives. So here's some of the tools that you might need. Like I said, you're going to need a, a good vehicle. Uh, some people use a car. Uh, it's easier using a, a van or a, a truck. So right in here, this is called a goat. Now, here's my 20, 28-inch uh letter here's my 20 inch letter this is a 22 inch folding letter this is a uh, 14 and then this is just a, like a, a, a two feet okay so if you so if you have wanted to get an idea of what this stuff costs i'm going to show you so the goat is 49 or excuse me, four hundred and eighty-nine dollars. 
if you get your basic 14 foot uh, multi purpose letter that's going to cost about $116 your 22 inch multi position letter you're looking at about 119 if you get the 28 inch extension letter you're looking at about 224 dollars now you can rewind and i got links to all of this stuff that i'm talking about and if you email me i can send you this file where uh you just copy and paste it and then you know exactly where to go for this stuff because it can be overwhelming trying to figure out uh, where to buy everything then of course you know i got my 20 inch um now earlier we were discussing about a belt that belt you can get it can catman catmandu.com and it has a clipboard a light up pop up magnifying glass pitch gauge uh feet inch calcul uh fraction calculator very nice calculator i will always also show you how to download one uh for your ipad or your M uh android it'll have a potty knife a multi-tool with pliers knives screwdrivers and even you know it has other things in it uh, a 21 inch led powerful mini light mini flashlight a chalk holder uh, then it has a magnet a free hand drawing grid and then plus your, your belt okay so if you were to purchase a 100 foot measuring tape this one right here you're looking at 16.99 at home depot if you go in and buy the 300 measuring tape uh, then you're looking at 29.97 personally i own both of them because uh, i might just use the 100 foot for about a week and then all of a sudden i do a fence that's 200 250 feet then this one comes in handy there's two distos measuring devices that work real good with exactimate and uh here's a link to exactimate that tells you about those two devices they link directly to your iphone your laptop your ipad or whatever and it's real nice to use those things uh, what i like using is the 35 inch fat max with this particular um, tape you can actually measure with and it'll hold for about uh, i think about like 14 15 feet and it's nice when you're trying to measure a real long five foot um, let's say a table but you can't lay it on top of there and i'll show you how to do how those actually work uh i also have this 12 inch uh wheel so let's say you have 500 600 feet of fencing you know when you go out there into those farms some of these fences are real real big well this particular device is very very helpful and you can get the job done real quick this little four inch wheel measuring device is also nice every one of these products has um, a purpose of its own and i use it accordingly to what i'm actually doing at that time another thing that's real nice is like and i mean you're only talking uh three dollars and 17 cents this thing is a whistle it's a magnifying glass you see right in here it's a magnifying glass there's your whistle and then you have your compass <clears throat> and the 
before I bought this thing, I would have I would take my phone out. Then I'd have to look, find the application that showed uh, my, you know, like if it was north, south, east, or west. With this thing, it has this little, little clipping thing. All you do is just pull it up and point to it. You know which way that direction is. Man, $3.17 says it's worth it. Now, if you do some steep, steep, steep roofs, you definitely have to purchase what you see here. Now, you don't have to purchase everything because, like, for instance, this little black uh, rope, they're pretty expensive. This one's a, a 100 foot. This is another 100 foot, and this is a 50 foot. Now, I have two cougar paws. I have this particular one, and then I have this one. They're almost the same price. And the reason I have both of them is because I always keep one in my car. This particular one, I take off and on, off and on. And if, uh, if you leave it at your hotel and you're out there and you have a 12 and 14 pitch, you're going to wish that you had that extra cougar paws. They always stay in my car. And now to get everything you see here, you're probably looking about a thousand dollars. But you know you're gonna make your money because some companies will allow you to um, call in for a, a letter assist. Some companies don't. You have to do it all, or you can pay somebody to do those steep roofs for you. Okay, so uh, now some companies are going to require you to do an ITIL report for siding, carpeting, flooring. And this ITIL kit will keep you from having to go to Federal Express, UPS, or wherever you have to deliver this product so that they can give you a price or an avail availability of it. Okay, so I'm telling you, uh, you're looking at $207, but it's worth every bit of it. Now, now all the companies do not use this particular uh, product, but the ones that they do use, you save a lot of time. Okay, now if you're doing flood or you're out there and it's always raining, uh, now you know this. Um, well, you, you might not this need this large uh, kind of uh, boots, but you definitely want to keep a pair of boots. And also, you see how I have this extra pair of. Uh, tennis shoes. I keep those in my car or my truck all the time. You're going to get out there, you're going to have nice shoes, or you're going to have your cougar paws, and you know, there's a big catastrophe. A flood came through, uh, there's mud, and you know, the, even the mud stinks. So you want a pair of shoes that, can, that you can take to the car wash, wash them out and throw them in a, in a washer later. Uh, they come in handy. I, so the waiters, that's optional. Not to, I don't know any adjuster that I know that has that. I'm just, uh, I'm spoiled and I get things that, uh, that I like. As you're looking at about sixty dollars, your boots are gonna be like twenty dollars. Now, if you're gonna be doing that I tell kit thing, these are some, my tools that I have in in my arsenal. Um, you know, this one costs two hundred forty uh, forty nine dollars, two hundred ninety nine dollars, ninety nine dollars. 
I, I'm a general contractor, so I happen to have all this already. But when you're doing a night tail report, sometimes you're going to have uh, woods that, that, that big. You're going to have to cut it about that small to make uh, your report. Now, there's a ways to get around it, but it's a pain. And uh, I'll show you all of that later in other videos. This little tool, uh, excuse me, this little light, it's uh, battery operated, chargeable. And when you're crawling in uh, your attic, your basements, your crawl spaces, this thing will light the, the bottom part up real real nice now this one you know it's it's uh, fifty dollars but it's worth every penny of it you can take real good photos okay uh, this guy here are frowned people don't like you using it uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you I'm not gonna say I don't because I do you know I'll have adjusters out there telling me oh this is wet I, you know, when they go to the next room, I kind of throw it in there to see if it's wet. Then uh, this is a caliper. I can measure the thickness of uh, wood, shingles, uh, siding. And so <clears throat> as far as computers, Basically, you're probably just going to need um, a laptop and a printer. Now, personally, and I use all of this, I have my basic computer. It takes three seconds for this computer to uh, boot down, three seconds for it to boot up. That's real important when you're out there. If you're in front of the customer and you hit your start button, and it's five minutes later till you can even start. And if it freezes up on you, then the customer and the contractor are, are, are looking at you like, what's going on? So it's really important to have your computer optimal. Make sure it's running at its best. Personally, this particular computer that I'm working on, I use it only for adjusting. Now, if you, uh, you can't see it back, back there, but I got my regular desktop. I got another laptop. That one that you see in, in the monitor, that one is put aside in a container that's ready for me to go deploy it. So that one doesn't ever get touched. And I have my iPad. I have a scanner. Then I got a 27 inch monitor. I like closing every day by 5 p.m. I'm done with all my claims. And the way I do it is first of all, I close everything on site. I can write a check right there on the spot. You know, I don't care if it's a $40,000 claim, a $10,000 claim. 99% of the times I can write a check on the spot. Now, <clears throat> right here, this is called a backup battery. I can hook this guy up to my iPhone. When you're out there, you are your battery is going to go uh, down. There's a lot of companies they require you to use this thing called Settle Assist. Settle Assist will drain your batteries. Okay, so you get up there on the roof after you've already done it, you're on your second inspection. You still got two, three other inspections and it's a 90, 100 degree temperature. All of a sudden, your phone loses uh, the battery. Okay, so you can get this guy, Hook it up to your phone and continue working. 
they don't charge it up all the way up like if it was uh, uh, at 100%. So then I have this other device here and this device will, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a hotspot. I have a hotspot for my iPhone that I can hook up to my laptop and then I have another eye spot. Okay, so sometimes your phone will connect good. Sometimes the hotspot will work. Once in a while, when you get way out there in the mountains, you might not have no con connectivity, but when you have two of them, more than likely you're gonna be able to connect. And a lot of these programs that you're going to be using, you're going to have to connect. I have an iPad. Uh, the iPad I use. By the way, everything you see here will connect to each other by this iPad or my phone. I don't have to plug nothing up. It, everything in, uh, can be connected without any wires. Just Wi-Fi. So I got my iPad. I'm able to show the insured photos, you know, because you'll come down and they're like, well, they told me I had a full replacement. And then you come down, you can show them, say, I'm sorry, sir, look, what you're looking here is this is called mechanical and it doesn't have nothing to do with uh, storm related damages. And, uh, you know, we can't pay for mechanical damage, but I'll explain all of that later. So these are some of the tools that you might need. You know, have a three-hole punch. Uh, to the right of me, there's about 15 three-inch binders, you know, some two-inch binders. And so when I have all these documents, as I finish my documents, I put a three-hole punch, I put those documents in a, in a binder keep them organized. So basically I know, uh, like I, uh, let's say today's the 12th, all the stuff that I worked on the 12th, I put it in there. Then on the 13th, punch it, put it on the 13th, if I'm finished with those things. And I, because uh, every once in a while, uh, your admin, your field support, your team lead, they're going to say, hey Hector, a week ago, you know, uh, you wrote, this particular note on your narrative do you remember uh something in particular about it i can go to my notes open up the three uh three inch binder and find oh man here's a note right here so it's very helpful to have this uh hole punch plus you know you want to have like a, a calculator this is a uh you know, uh, you're like uh, this one. Uh, that one's a uh, eight eight gigabyte flash card. It's nice to have some scissors, a stapler, some highlighters, and a measuring uh, ruler. Let me see what else I have. Uh, and so this particular dime, uh, document, you can always call me, and not, not call me. Well, I'll, I'll, if you email me and you leave me your phone, uh, more than likely I will call you if I'm not uh, doing five or six claims a day. So now, I'm going to say that. Let me see what else I, I can discuss. I'm trying to make this video kind of short, so. Then, so one real important factor in being successful is having your computer organized. You see what my desktop looks like? Now, right now I have a folder here. Normally I don't have one there unless if I'm just working on that particular one that minute. Before I shut that computer down, that thing is going to go into uh you know, like this insurance folder. Now, 
organize your folders you can go in and find anything if you organize it okay so let's say I'm looking for CNC it's one of the uh, insurance places Crawford uh, let's say I'm looking for something for um, Twia Ward Law you get you some folders and put anything associated with that particular uh, 470 claims you know then let's say you go into 470 claims you got American Model Insurance uh, Kemper you got uh, Encompass America uh, Swift Triple A uh, you know they have trainings on Xactimate Allstate USAA Harvard. so if you keep this stuff organized then you can always find things um, not just keeping it organized but know how to use this little bar right here so let's say that if you're using the clip this little clip it uh, tool you use it a lot just move it over to the right because it's always going to be there let's say you're using Photoshop you know like right now I use a lot of Photoshop on the stuff that I'm showing you or let's say that I'm using Word a lot if that's the first thing I'm going to be using that particular month I'll bring everything to the right so that you don't have to go looking for this stuff uh, let me see here and also know how to move around for instance uh, let's say got my word document and uh, you know I have a particular folder I want to open up know how to navigate so you can do things real fast that's what I was talking about okay so now um, then we're gonna go into I want to skip a lot of this stuff but you know some of the stuff that I am going to show you uh, I'm gonna go and go into Xactimate now I'm going to show you a little trick and and I teach all of this stuff so I'm going to Xactimate Xactimate and a lot of programs are going to want you to uh, to put a password and some of them require you to use asterisks and numbers and letters and capital and it's hard to remember everything all I'm going to do is hit one key and another key and you see how it automatically put the password so that's uh, something I also show how to do um, but I'm gonna uh, so in this particular videos in this particular videos what I'm gonna actually show you is we're gonna create a file well no we're not just going to create a file we're going to do an inspection from top to bottom from the beginning to the end so and for instance we'll go in and I'll show you how to label the stuff so here's the photographs you know we'll go through every every photograph that you required now other companies require more other companies require less but I'll show you how to do every one of these things then then we're going to go in and um, go into a sketch every time I'm recording it slows my computer down so you know I'm going to show you how to <clears throat> do a sketch how to be be able to go into different kinds of modes like that's 1d 2d if you click here it goes to 2d so go back to 1d 3d there's ways to be able to move the prop move the uh, canvas and your image or click on it 
10 you know view everything I want to teach you how to put so let's say that you um, you see all these little little dots those things like that one there that one there is a, a it's a light fixture that one is a plug then those are uh, just by looking at that I can tell you where your uh, plugs are you know see like that one's a plug because because of the distance but you can also click on it and it's gonna tell you what it is if you know what that LIT that's a chandelier like okay so uh, then I'm gonna teach you how to do your cabinets your refrigerators uh, go in and put um, in your in, in your bathrooms Let me find a bathroom here let me go here and Okay, let me hear. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to navigate. So let's say that I want to uh, get this particular bathroom, get it to where you can see it. You see how fast I, I, I uh, was able to enlarge it? You can see I have that little commode there. I'll go back to 3D, and that's what it's going to look like. But then this sort of going to be some of your like for instance you see that the S that's a that's a light switch here's my plugs here's my uh, ceiling fans and fans so I'll show you how to do that I'll show you how to draw the uh, roofs how to draw fences how to draw elevations some companies require you to draw an elevation like this. This is that whole house. Actually, that house is my house. And we're gonna we're gonna sketch it from top to bottom. Every plug, every outlet, uh, your electrical panels, everything. I'm gonna show you how to do. Um, then I will show y'all how to do an actual estimate. Uh, so you know so we go to uh estimate items then we'll go into the estimate and i'm gonna show y'all how to put your depreciation uh there's a lot of tricks in everything we do and uh, i'm gonna show you a bunch of tricks okay so I'm going to close this uh, video, but now you have an idea of what each one of those videos is going to be. Number one, how to prepare to become an independent insurance claim adjuster. In order to become a claim adjuster, you must have a high school diploma or GED equivalent. Some employers prefer an associate's degree or a bachelor degree, but it's not required. Determine your insurance career interests, property, auto, commercial, flood, and so on. Complete an insurance license course and take an exam and pass it. To maintain your license, you have to complete 26 CE credits. Out of those 26, two of them are ethics and 24 or just general basic tools you need you'll need a vehicle with a letter rack a navigation device gps you use an iphone an android or a mapping app a laptop computer with exact mate and maybe some ability portable printer a good letter 28 feet 
extension letter, a 22 foot telescopic aluminum multi-purpose letter, digital camera, and an iPhone or an Android. Measuring devices like a laser distance measure, a 35 inch measuring tape, two belt, you can go to custom tools belt.com cougar paul's boots you can go to cougar paul's.com yeah applying for a job the first thing i want to say is have your computer organized for a lot of reasons once you get out there you want to have organization so let me show you some organization uh, things. Okay, first, make sure you have a, a folder and place everything in that particular folder that has to do with insurance. Not just insurance, but your personal stuff like your resume. So, what's this? I have folders within a folder that says insurance folder now so I've worked for CNC you know I've done stuff FEMA stuff I've done uh, work for 470 claims I got a folder back there for pilot I got a folder for you know different things I've done for the insurance so one thing you want to do let me go to my personal um, folder here so if i go to hector mendoza personal records i have i have my associate degree birth certificate car insurance uh documents ready so when they ask you for your uh dd 214 your form i9 your military id some people ask for a lot of stuff uh you know your passport uh personal checks so you don't have to scan it you already have everything on your computer you know your associate's degree another thing that is real real handy is having um your insurance certifications and your insurance licenses so if i click on my insurance licenses i have an excel file and on that excel file gives me so i can go in you know i go to data sort by and if i want to know how many remaining days I have I can go by let's say uh, column J hit OK now my first licenses they're going to expire are coming up pretty soon those two my Florida and Arkansas they expire in 82 days so those are the first ones I'm going to have to uh, reapply for then the next ones are going to be those and so on I mean some of them have uh, you know 80 820 days I mean some of them last a long time so so have that ready and if you know a little bit about Excel just for grins you know like let's say I want to see my Delaware license all I do is click on that button I, I got this thing organized where it'll go in and open up my Delaware license uh, I'm a, you know my Texas license uh, you know click on Texas and it'll open that up same thing with your um, certifications you know uh, and separate your certifications with your license because you want to be organized so I go into my certifications here's all my certifications that I have actually I got a lot more than that I've, I've threw a bunch of them because they're already expired but uh, some of them 
I just no, I didn't think that it would be helpful. You may also make yourself a list. And you know the dates and when they expire. That way when you're doing your application, man, you can go do it quick and accurate. Um another thing you want to have is a document chronologically from 10 years ago until now okay so this document that I have goes from now until the latest and latest time that I've worked for instance ward law claims I started in uh, May 2019 present I got a little note saying what I do at that uh, company I got their telephone number so when I do apply somewhere else I give them their telephone number and uh, an email same thing 470 pilot McDoza Inc uh, then I got little things like I can copy and paste and sometimes I provide, or it's already opened it up, uh, like my company, you know, I tell them, I, you know, I've been in the con uh, contract construction business for 24 years. And then, so you go to the Better Business Bureau shows right there. He's been in the business for 25 years. He has, uh, uh, you know, um, A plus rating. You know, you keep on going. He's going to tell you. When I started the business, the categories that I've worked, you know, what uh, what they've checked me out, they've checked that I that I am an air conditioning, roofing contractor, painting, and so on. So, you know, have that stuff available in case somebody questions anything that you're doing. And the least thing you want, the last thing you want to do, is have a chronological order of dates and time of when and where you lived. For instance, from, let's start with 2003. I lived in Abrams Road from 2003 to 2004. Then I moved over to Frankfurt at 2004 to 2009. Then I moved to Garrison Way from 2009 to 2015. And then I moved to Long, uh, Lone Star Court from 2000 and then until uh, 2019 until present. So have this stuff ready and it can make your life real, real simple. Now, let me see what else. Uh, also, have yourself a resume prepared. Everybody should, since, since you're 17 years old, you should have a resume prepared from the, from the time you're 17 until now and, and update it constantly now this one in particular this is my resume and people people laugh at it they say dude that is way too long but that's my resume I'm sorry actually I have another resume that is actually four pages long and and the reason is because I constantly update my resumes on that other resume it's for my purpose. And if somebody says, well, can you tell me a little bit more of what you did there because there's not enough information on, on your resume, you know, I can go into Hector Mendoza personal records. Then, you know, if I go into resume, you see how everything in logical, uh, alphabetical order, here's a long version of that resume. Now that one, I don't, you know, I've only had a couple of people. I mean, I go into detail everything I do for every company. Because normally when I do stuff for a company, I they put me to do a lot of different things. Like when I used to be in the printing industry, uh, I, I worked on all of those programs. And I was very, very good at those programs. That's a lot of programs to know. Plus, I knew more than that. That's just for that 
But anyway, so in your resume, what you want to do is have your basic stuff. You know, uh, er emphasize your customer service, your negotiating skills, things of that nature. Uh, you know, have an area of your expertise. What are you good at? And then you're going to have your professional experiences in a chronological order and then explain what you did at those companies. Because if you say, oh, I, was a, uh, I was an adjuster from this day to this day, that's it. Well, what did you do as an adjuster? Did you handle claims? Did you do daily claims? Did you do outside claims? Uh, did you have to know things about policies? Some, some places you work, all you do, you go down there, you, uh, you write the estimate, you send it in, and they handle everything else. All the compliance, the priors, uh, you don't have to know uh, the policies, you don't have to know if there was any priors or things of that nature. So some companies want to know what exactly you did for those firms. Um, so a lot of companies like to hire people that are military because some military people have real good organizational skills. Yeah, by listening to me, you know that uh, I don't speak real, real good, but I do have organizational skills. Uh, and that's one thing military people do have is good military. Uh, so it's good to, to uh, put that experience. And a lot of them are going to ask you because some of them like to hire military people. Put down your, what degree you have. Or if you have a GED, or if you have a high school uh, equivalency, or excuse me, high school uh, diploma, list if you have an associate's degree, bachelor's degree. Some companies require that you have five years experience or a bachelor's degree. You don't have to know nothing about construction. You don't really have to know too much about adjusting. If you have a bachelor's degree, an inside uh, position they'll hire you because they know you are probably going to be trainable. List your certifications, which licenses you have, your technical skills, and if you have, you know, more than one language, list it. There's other things that I go over in detail and how to do all of this stuff, but those are videos that will come at a later time. Another habit that you should get into is backing up your hard drive. If you have the right software, it's very, very easy. I have hundreds and thousands of megabytes that I got stored. And I stored in two locations. And look how simple it is to do this. This stuff you got to know how to do, first of all, and I teach all of this anyway. So look how simple it is. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to back up one of my drives, and then I'll back up another one to show you how fast it is. Okay, so I am going to back up from the last time that I backed up. I'm going to hit this button right here, and it's going to start evaluating both of the uh, of, of the computers okay so since the last time I've I've, um, I've backed up I actually have a hundred and ninety files fortunately this drive there is a real real big drive because right now I'm copying 2.96 gigabytes Okay, so all I do is hit start and watch how fast this thing does 2.9 gigabytes. Actually, it's going to take two minutes. Okay, so normally it doesn't take that long. But this one here I hadn't backed up in a while, so... Uh, 
it's it's doing this thing normally uh, i don't think it takes more than uh half a minute because uh that 2.9 gigabytes it's the stuff that i've been uh gathering up to do this videos so it's uh don't look like a lot of stuff but it's, it's taking a lot of uh, megabytes to do this video I'm doing it in sections for time purposes i'm not going to do the other one I, I thought this would only take a few seconds because that's what it normally takes so we'll we'll back up the hard drive and we'll continue to do other things that are uh, more important you don't want to see it here and watch me back up my hard drive And three, two, one second. Bam. I just backed up 2.9 gigabytes of data. That's a lot of data. Most of y'all are never going to use that in probably in a year. Okay. So now all I'll do is close this. Okay. Now we come to the fun part. You're going to hear the word compliance a lot. What they're talking about are notes that have to be put into Xactimate, Exact Analysis, Simbility, or at the AI portals. And they all got different portals that you got to learn. Okay, so when they're talking about the compliances, basically, you get a call or an email. So basically, here, let, me, let me show you. Um, what I'm talking about. So the first thing you're going to do is you'll get an email. And then, you know, so you open up the email. Uh, okay, you open it up. Then you're going to get the information out of the email and you're going to go to Xactimate. So I got steps on what you have to do you know for each one and then you're going to map it okay so <clears throat> excuse me those compliances are for instance you're going to attempt to contact the insured but before I do that every deployment I go to has different compliance notes or letters they want you to do. I get those and I create what they're called what are called tokens. Most people go in there and they have to type a bunch of information. Well I I make it real easy. I use tokens. I have them automatically populate into the Word document. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so uh, attempt contact. So let's say that I call and I don't get a hold of the insured, then I have to put a note telling the AI firm that I tried to call who I call at what numbers what email address is that I left my name and number, who I was, my telephone number, and explained it what hours they could reach me. Now, if if you did get a hold of them, then there's another template that you would use, and it would automatically say like, "Hey, I called and spoke with." Name insured. Ask him about insured. Uh, ask him about what he discussed on the FNOL. For instance, he said he had damage to the roof, uh, or excuse me, hell damage to the roof, roof components, gutters, downspouts, window screens, sidings, and so on. I, you know, you have to explain when you set the appointment. Some companies require that you verify the risk location. 
where the damages, you know, the place where the damages were, what their mailing address, because the estimate might not go to where they're renting a, plot, a property and they might be living at this address. You know, uh, you, ex you ask if they know what their deductible is, you verify what mortgage company, but that's the kind of stuff that that you're gonna have to um, um, gather. Okay, so I have all kinds of different ones, like you know, settle settlement notes, settle on site, condo inspection, water loss, contact information. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have to request for a declaration page. So instead of me writing it, you know. Uh, all I do is copy and paste this into the uh, subject line, and I tell them who the insured is, the claim number, and ask for the, uh, or let's say that I want to request a prior. So these are the people in some companies that you would have to uh, email to, and you know, you ask that you want the uh, prior losses. Or let's say that you can't get a hold of the insured, and sometimes you have to send them an email asking them to contact you because a lot of people won't answer their phones because of all the robocalls. Robo okay, so um, now, so I'm going to get down to what I'm going to show in Xactimate. So in Xactimate, you know. We'll go in, I'll show you how to label the photos. And uh, and not just that, but I will also show you how to label photos. For instance, you know, front up uh, here, okay, front elevation, then down here I'll put dwelling front elevation overview. Uh, you know, dwelling front elevation, Elevation close up of the address, then right here. You see, up here I keep on telling it what elevation it is. Dwell in front elevation close up, hail damage window screen. So I do that and I'll explain what are the minimum requirements photos that you have to take for most carriers. Not all the carriers are exactly the same, but uh, it's a basic, basic uh, amount of photos that you need. Now, this one here has a lot of them because what I'm, what I'm showing you, and we're gonna draw a whole house, everything. So, so let's go to the uh, sketch, and let's go to the rooms. So. If I go to 3D, oh, 3D, uh, I'm going to show how to do the windows, how to do pillars in between rooms. A lot of people can't do that, so you'll 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 learn how to do all that. How to draw the fence? I'll show you how to draw a roof. How to? Then sometimes you got to have. Um, elevations that you have to draw even though you have your uh, uh, let me see you actually have your elevations here I'll explain why it's not good to use this as uh, as an estimating tool so then, uh, so let me sh so let me show you what. Let me delete some of this stuff so it doesn't look too bad here. Delete that, and I go to the room and three. Show all uh, here. Go back to. Let me delete this temporarily, and so this is what you would be looking at. Uh, so let's go to interiors. 3D show all 
I'll, you see how hard it is to move stuff around? I'm going to show you how easy it is. And of course, I will hit space. I can move it over, and then I can move it around. If you don't know how to do this, you can spin your wheels trying to make it find certain elevations. So I'll show you how to move it, how to rotate it, and a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, so I, I don't want to go too much into this because I, I go into detail on everything. Then we're going to go into the estimate. Uh, <clears throat> I'll go over. Here we go. Uh, I'll go over a lot of things. Uh, here, let me find some more. Actually, I don't have a lot of estimates here. So <clears throat> here's my, my uh, roofing. I'll show you how to put in your depreciations, uh, you know, your uh, waste, little things of that nature. But we're going to go into detail. But now I will show, I'm going to show everything in Xactimate. If you notice, there are tons and tons of pull downs, okay? And I'm going to show you how to use every one of these things here in detail. So everything has a, a reason for, for it being there. Okay, so let me see what else. I think that's about it. Uh, let, let me look at my notes and see if there's something else. Uh, guidelines, uh, right in the estimate, narrative. Yeah, that's basically uh, that. what I'm going to have. Like I said, I will show it in great, great detail. But there are going to be a bunch of different videos. <clears throat> in addition to those eight videos that you're going to have, those videos are going to be broken down even further than that. Because just on rooms, I can probably talk about how to do something in in uh in Bruce for 20 minutes about floors about uh ceilings each one of them you can study or uh you know talk about it for about 20 minutes so that's basically what i'm going to show and i hope y'all enjoy the videos that i'm about to make thank y'all for watching this video